Welcome to the Centerprise help video. In this video, we are going to examine the Centerprise Data Integrator's server piece. We are going to have a look at Server Explorer and the interaction of the client with the server. When you install the Centerprise, it installs two pieces, one being the client or the studio that you are seeing on the screen and second piece is the server. Server has the engine running on it. Once you create any data flow or a workflow, you need to run it on the server. From inside the client, you should be able to see your default server and the server's combo. If it doesn't appear here, you can go to the server explorer that is already open here. You can get to that by going to view menu and going to the server explorer. So once you go to the server explorer, this window is open and uh, this window is for all the management of the server from inside the client. As you can see here, I have already one server and the name of the server is shown here. However, if I have other servers and I would like my client to point to those servers, I would add that connection. And for that, there is a toolbar command here, add server connection. I click on it, I can specify my host name Say for example, I have a machine where my server is running and its name is server1. I'll put the server name 1 and uh, I'll specify the port number and save the connection. Once I have my server connected, I have uh, other options such as if I want, I can uh, remove the connection. If the server is running, I can stop the server or if it is stopped, I can start the server. So these are the options to start, stop and remove the connection. For the server administration, we have several options inside the server explorer. If you go to the connection properties, you can see the connection properties such as the host name and port number. If you go to the server information, you can see information about your server and your server snapshots, system information, and licensing information, and all these informations. If you go to the server administration, this is where you can specify uh, your user roles, you can define um, how the user, users are authorized, uh, all users are authorized in this case to connect to the server. If you want, you can put a filter that only these specific users are allowed. And you can put filter on uh, uh, users or if you want you can specify only a user group is allowed to connect to the server and this is all using windows um, user groups and users this is the place where you're doing the user administration if you want to do the setup for the notification emails you can go to the first page and, and you can specify your uh, email server information and this is the email server information the application is going to use wherever you're running any kind of uh, email notifications whether inside a workflow or inside a uh, inside a scheduler and uh, and uh, application is going to use the same information everywhere you can you can specify your email server information and test if the information is correct or not by using the send test email and uh, one more thing is that you can specify here is the staging directory and uh, other properties required for running your jobs. Staging directory is the place where uh, the files are going to be copied before processing if you are running it on a remote server. You can specify the file path um, for the staging directory and this is where it is going to store all the temporary files. And it has uh, information about uh, the server log deletion, so uh, if the server log is generated and after how many days it is going to clean that log. So these are the properties you can specify inside the server administration. Now let's move on to the scheduling of the jobs and how to run jobs on the server. If you want to schedule a job, you will go to the schedule bad jobs. On this screen, uh, you need to click on this add a scheduler task to add a new schedule task. And uh, in the file location, you point to the data flow or the workflow that you want to schedule. In this case, I take this data flow and open it. And now I have options for my frequency of the schedule, such as I can choose to run just once 
and specify the time when it is going to run or I can specify hourly and uh, you can specify on what hours it is going to run if there, if there are any restrictions on hours and frequency details you can specify at every hour and at starting at this minute and run multiple times every hour at the interval of a given number of minutes you can do daily schedule and you can specify every day or the weekdays or every certain number of days you can specify your start day and you can specify the time of the day when it is going to run and then you can do the weekly schedule and you can specify on what days of the week it is going to run next is the monthly schedule where you can specify how it is going to run on the on the monthly basis on what months of the year and uh, on what day and then the last but not the least is uh, based on the trigger that is when a file arrives and it is, uh, it is going to run the job you can specify what directory to watch where the file arrives you can put a filter on the file and uh, you can uh, specify what to do after the file uh, has arrived and the, and the job has run so such things you can do for the scheduling and once you have specified your schedule you can you can specify uh, job parameters you can specify notification email uh, job parameters are if you look at uh, the job parameters job parameters are uh, the the source file paths or destination file paths or source uh, database info or destination database information all these informations uh, are scanned and presented to you inside these job parameters so you know, for example this data flow uses in source one excel file and this is the file it is using but here you can change this file and uh, you can schedule it with the change file path so what happens that when the job runs in place of using the original file used to create the data flow or workflow it is going to use the the file path you're specifying here same goes true with the database destinations or database information for the source uh, in this case there is a, a database destination uh, information and it is writing into the SQL Server database table you can click on this button at the end and it will present you with the uh, database connection information dialog in this dialog you can change the connection and now you can point it to a different database then uh, the last tab page is for the notification email you can uh, enable notification for the schedule you can uh, pick options such as notify only on abnormal termination you can have uh, uh, send notification email when the job ends or when the job starts uh, and there are different type of email, not, uh, email content you can do a summary or detailed you can specify your email addresses separated by commas here and you can specify if, if you want to have any attachments so these are the things you can do uh, with the scheduler yeah, once you have it uh, created you can go ahead and save it and once you save it it is going to uh, show up in this grid let's go ahead and uh, point it to this date and this time I'm going to run it just once it appears in my jobs those are scheduled now once I have scheduled the job I can monitor the jobs as well on the server I click on it and it shows me all the jobs uh, running and uh, those who have run in the past and all the information I can uh, filter the jobs by uh, these options such as show all the jobs show jobs those are created by me show currently running jobs you can have uh, details for selected item you can delete selected items or you can delete all the items we have looked at the options of uh, scheduling jobs for the batch kind of jobs and uh, the batch kind of jobs are data flows and workflows however there is a third type of the jobs that is real-time data flow where you need to deploy the job for the real time and uh, the counterparts for those kind of jobs are monitor real-time jobs and schedule or deploy real-time jobs so if I click on this it is presenting me with a similar screen but in this case you can see here you can specify only the RTDFs those are the real-time data flows you point to them and you pick the startup type automatic or uh, manual and that is the only difference otherwise everything stays the same and this job once it gets deployed it is running continuously on the server and is watching for the data source arrival uh, the way you have configured it inside the inside the real-time data flow 
this concludes this uh, help video for servers in Center Prize Data Integrator. Thank you for watching.